Salam alaikum. That's peace to you. Then they're gonna say malaik uh, asalam alaikum malaikum asalam. When we went to uh, Tel Aviv and Haifa, we see shalom. Now here, how's everybody? Peace be with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm so grateful and honored to be here in your beautiful sanctuary this morning. So, actually, I was, uh, last July, I was elected as a presbyter board together with Pastor Fell. And now, it's my duty and responsibility to come here to see you, to pray for you, to see that everything is okay in our organization praise the lord <laughs> hallelujah so allow me to see a little bit about our uh, church our organization the assembly of the firstborn how the assembly of the firstborn in uh, mindanao was uh, established so in 1980 when Pastor Midi Lusica from Balejo, he was associated with Pastor Balye. Who knows uh, Pastor Lusica here? All right. So Pastor Lusica wrote a letter to his dad, Rafael, and said, Dad, can you do a pioneering work in Mindanao, especially in our town, Jimenez? And I will support uh, $10 a month. So what uh, the dad do, uh, he looked for two young pastor, Pastor Castaño and Pastor Bendoy. They're both on the 20s. You know, young people are so active. So now their target is me. Number one target because at the time I was finished uh, my college in uh, Manila, in FEO, then I went back to the province, bringing the business of my parents. So the pastor, one of my, the pastor, the young pastor is my classmate, and he asked me, Philip, how's your life? Then I told him, yeah, it's full of uh, excitement. So the 24 hours, 8 hours, I'm on high of drugs because I was addicted by uh, cup syrup. You know, the cocaine, uh, the codeine. Mm. So eight hours you are sleeping, then eight hours you are struggling. Because you are fighting when, you, when the drug goes down, then that's the start of your struggles. But uh, he is bringing a black book, the Bible, and he told me that, why, do, why won't you trust, why, why won't you put your, try this uh, Bible? At the time, I was so allergic on that uh, black Bible, that black book. But he told me that, uh, you know what? In 2 Corinthians 5, 7, 10, 17, if any, man, if any man be in Christ, he become a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So in my mind, how could I... Uh, become new because I tried many times to withdraw from that uh, drugs, but I could not make it. So then he told me, brother, try this one. This is, my life was changed because of this book. And he caught another verse, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. He gave me a dynamite preaching. Then I start getting scared. Oh, what happened to me? Maybe tomorrow if I'm going to die. Because now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of acceptance. You don't know what is tomorrow. Amen. Then I started, where am I going to receive Christ? She's here. So on that day, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. That was 1983. So we started the church. 
we uh, we are like like five members. We rented a house. Then my old friends they won't uh, go along on that way, the street. They're gonna look for a back road because we are there inviting them to a uh, Sunday service. But praise the Lord, that church right now, there are like, it started, and now there are like 500 members and 38 uh, daughter churches under Pastor Tony uh, Rona. He's from Ilocos. He went to Mindanao to pastor. After three months, he is flowing to speak Bisaya. He could preach Bisaya. Praise the Lord. So God has a plan. Then, on that day, 1986, so when the revolutionary government came under Corazon Aquino, so it was totally changed because God gave me a chicken chance. So I was, I was appointed as a OIC mayor for almost two years. I ran our municipality for two years. Then that's the time I found my wife. So Sister Vicky, can you stand up? I would like to introduce my wife, <laughs> Sister Vicky. <laughs> so he helped me, she helped me how to grow uh, in Christian life. So my church, my family, so we are 10 in the family and four of my brother and sister were com converted to Christianity. 1974, I arrived here in uh, US, praise the Lord. So yeah, it's beautiful one, but the problem is, do I experience crisis in life? Because we're going to talk about crisis in life today. Yes, there's a lot of crisis happen in our lives. Praise the Lord. Please, uh, please open your Bible on Matthew 8, 23 to 27. So this is our message this morning. If you have pen, can you uh, write down the, the topic? That I'm going to share. Because this one could help your future. I believe everyone will undergo crisis in life. So please listen carefully. So we're going to read this Matthew 8, 23 to 27. This is a beautiful story. Matthew 23, uh, 8, 23 to 27. I'm going to read this one. Then he got into the boat and his disciple followed him. Twenty-eight. Uh, then he got into the boat and his disciple followed him without warning. Say without warning. Without warning, a furious storm came into the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciple went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the wave. And it was completely calm. Then men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Father God, we ask you, Lord, to bless the word that we just read, O oh God. And Father, Holy Spirit, we ask you to guide us, to enlighten us, to open our minds, Lord, so that we could understand understand more deeper to your word, O oh God. Father, we rely on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we could see here in this story that when Jesus went to the boat, the disciples followed Jesus. So when I was converted, when I was accepted Jesus, I'm the follower of Jesus. I was called a disciple. 
of Jesus. So whenever my pastor go, I followed him. We go to the Bible study. We go everywhere. We go to different churches to share the word of God. Praise the Lord. But what happened? I'm going to put the title of this story of my message this morning. How can I be confident in a crisis? So, how do we respond when crisis come in our lives? Okay, but before the message, I'm going to give you five facts about crisis. What is crisis? So, crisis is like a storm that comes without warning. Without telling people that uh, this is going to happen, without warning, suddenly it comes. So, crisis, number one, crisis is inevitable. Write that down. Crisis is inevitable. It's unavoidable. It happened to everyone, everywhere, at any time. So what happened this week when we opened our TV, we just hear that some uh, in Southern California, there's a shooting. The student went to the club listening the country music, but suddenly there's a gunfire. How many people died? Twelve. Even the police officer, he doesn't know. When he opened the door, he got an eye-to-eye -eye contact with that gunman. He was shot and died. Unavoidable. He doesn't, didn't know that there is crisis come into their lives. What happened to the Northern California and the Southern California right now? Even right now, we are experiencing the smoke. They just did their campfire. Then the fire suddenly occurred. Even the People that driving their car, they could not get away. They died inside the car. That's crisis in life. It's inevitable. It's happened anytime, anywhere, to everyone. Number two, crisis is variable. It would be in different kind. It would be relational. It would be emotional, it would be your health, or your spiritual crisis. What happened 2008? When suddenly the market collapsed. A lot of people loses their house. They could not maintain their house because the value of the house is go down deeper than their mortgage. It's suddenly, if I know that happened 2008, I better sold my house. I lost three houses on that time, 2008. I lost one in Thomas, I lost two in Texas. So that's a crisis, financial crisis. Sometimes health crisis. Do I experience health crisis? Yes, I have crisis with my health. It's a variable in different kind. Then number three, it's impartial. So we're going to go on Matthew 5.45. Matthew 5.45. You may be a children of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good. And send rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Remember, to the righteous and unrighteous. How about me, brother? I, I, I go to the church every Sunday. I attended Bible study. But crisis comes even if you are a righteous. What happened to who? He is the righteous man. But crisis came to the family. So, 
No parts have yet been taken. Either you are old or you are young, you are strong or weak, you are a good looking or not. It's all. Everyone will undergo crisis in life. What happened in, uh, in our lives? 2014, but before 2014, crisis came in our lives. 2013, I commit my life to the Panera Group. We have a Panera Group in Atomas. Every Tuesday morning, we gather with the men, we discuss, we share about the Bible, about the Word of God. So, I thought in my mind, Lord, because I commit my life to lead this group, then you will bless me. That's my thinking. Because when you give your life, of course, there's a blessing. But different things happen, brother and sister. One day, 2014 came, after my birthday, Sister Vicky came home crying. And she told me, Dad, I lost my job. And we are shocked because I'm not working. I don't have job. She is only the one working in the family. What did my response? I get panic. On my mind, I told, oh, I need to go home. I need to go home in the Philippines and start my business again. Because what we're going to do here in America, both of us are not working. Then we are paying this kind of mortgage. We have everything and Kevin at the time is going to college. So I'd rather go to back to the Philippines. But when Stephen heard that statement, he told me, Dad, relax. This is not the end of the world. This is only trials. I was rebuked. Then we start praying. We start crying because it's really difficult on the time. Yeah. Then we just uh, do some prayer. Every morning we prayed, we cried with Sister Vicky. Then after three days, something happened. Her lip ankle was broken. She was, uh, uh, she twisted her ankle and there's uh, uh, hair, like a, a broken ankle. Scratches. Then just, uh, we went to the specialist and the doctor said, oh, you have two choices, either operation, surgery, or just a natural healing. So 14 months, we suffered that one. We cried to the Lord 14 months. And our income on that year is only $12,000. So it's really difficult to survive for a family. Then you are, your income is $12,000. But God has a plan. God has a plan. So he humbled our hearts. Then we cried together. We prayed together. We went to the small groups. We shared this crisis in life to others. So God has a plan. I'm going to tell you at the end what, what's the plan of God. Why did he allowed those crises in life. What's the purpose? So it's impartial. Then number four, it's crisis is unpredictable. No warning. When the storm comes, there's no warning. It just suddenly but those fishermen, they are professional. They have uh, several trips on that uh, sea. 
But on that time, they were panicked and they, they shout to Jesus, Lord, save us. It's a life threatening. It's a life threatening. So it's unpredictable. Without warning, a furious storm came onto the lake. I'm going to give you an uh, example of, the, uh, of this uh, unpredictable. Uh, we have a kababayan named Elmer Pailaga. So he, he, he lives in uh, Bakersfield, California. He has a daughter, 16 years old. And that daughter, is, is, he teaches to uh, drive. One day, when the daughter seated on the car, he was in front, in the garage. Instead of backing up, the daughter put it on the front drive. And he was hit by the car so hard. Because instead of breaking the gas pedal, he uh, stepping it. And that guy, he was thrown down. He banged his head to the floor, to the cement. And he was on beach eatable right now. Wow. I visited that guy in the care home. And he could not remember anything. But he could, he could speak. And I asked him to follow my prayer. And I asked him to accept Jesus Christ. But that's the thing. Unpredictable. Sometimes even the death of the family. We could not, we could not guarantee. There's thing happen. Then, number five. I can choose my response. This is the five parts. I can choose my response. Number one, if you choose to be panicked, like the disciples, like me, I was panicked. So the disciples, they were panicked. Lord, we're going to drown, we're going to die. So sometimes when the intense crisis happened, we're panicked. Right? We could not think that's the first reaction to be panic. But number two, to be at peace. So Jesus, what happened? He just is sleeping over there. And that time Jesus is human. And he is not worried because he put his trust on God. He know who who God is. Who's the father? So, my our one of our brother Bert in Thomas, who do, who knows brother Bert, who was in the um, West Sacramento last men's fellowship. He was there standing in front of the men. Huh? Brother Bert, the one that testified. He was a cancer survivor. He was a fourth degree uh, cancer in hospice. Last July, the doctor asked him to go home and wait over there. So the nurses just visited him. But he survived. And in part, he, uh, when we have a water baptism uh, in Panera at uh, Pastor Sani's uh, church, one of the brother was uh, uh, do a, a water baptism. Then the pastor challenged who wants to go with uh, this uh, brother? And Brother Bert, without warning, without uh, uh, short. So he raised his hand and he was baptized over in the church, water baptism. But last two weeks, Saturday, when I visited him, he was so weak. And uh, Sister Beth told me, brother, since uh, Brother Bert came from New York, from that vacation, his health is deteriorating very fast. Then I asked Brother Bert, Brother Bert, what's your, what, what's your condition right now? He said, brother, I'm not worried on the height of dying 
I'm not worried. This is his word. I'm not worried. I know where I'm going. I am forgiven. Oh, praise the Lord. So he is at peace. Why? Because he trusted God. He trusts God. And I told everyone, you know, Brother Bert, last word. He is not worried because he knows where he is going. Yeah. Two days after, we would like to visit him on the morning after the Panera. So we're going to uh, sing a song for him. But 5 o'clock in the morning, the daughter uh, texted me, Pastor Phil, my dad passed away at 2.30 in the morning. So... We could see that he is at peace. He is at peace. So he is not panicked. So that that that's the true response. Now I'm gonna bring you three things on how to respond during crisis. This is the important one because we know that crisis happen any time. To the righteous people, even if we are on fire of God, we will be tested. So, what we gonna do during this crisis? We gonna prepare ourselves. Number one, we need to refocus on God's closeness. Refocus on God's closeness. If you are in the boat with Jesus then you are saved. That's why Brother Bert says, I'm not afraid, brother, if I die, because I know where I'm going. I will be with the Lord. So, refocus, be close to Jesus. Brother Bert, every Friday, he is there in our house attending the small groups. He loves the singing, the hymnal singing, closer walk with thee. Amen. That's why the daughter asked me, Pastor, can you sing a song for, your, for my dad on the funeral? Yes. So we are preparing his favorite song. So we focus on God's closeness. In Isaiah 43.2, what did it say in Isaiah 43 2? When we pass through the water, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will be the we will not be born. The flames will not set you ablaze. Praise the Lord. Whatever situation right now, I don't know with you guys, with you brothers and sisters, if you have crisis in the past or you are experiencing crisis right now or maybe tomorrow in the future, but remember there's this verse. And I will pass through the river. They will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will, you will not be born. God is with us. He will not leave us nor forsake us until to the end. Refocus on God's closeness. The Bible says in Psalms 34, 18, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saved those who are crossed in spirit. Even right now, if you experience heaviness in your heart, go to God. Be close to God. Amen. Attend Bible studies. Amen. We have Bible studies. Amen. Attend small groups. Amen. You know what? That trials in our lives, it makes me closer to God with Sister Vicky. We committed the Panera, uh, I committed to uh, give my my volunteering work to the uh, intercipi which trained the uh, 
uh, people to go to uh, the 1040 windows as missionaries. So we attended uh, every Tuesday night Bible studies in our neighborhood after uh, in the house of uh, Willie Rafanan. Then just this year, we opened a Friday night small group Bible study in our house. So that's the way we become closer to God. And every morning, we do our devotional. We read the Bible. We talk to God. Then while walking, doing my exercise, I'm just talking to the Lord. That's refocusing our closeness to God. Then number two, rely on God's care. We need to rely. Mark 4, 38. Jesus was in the stern. The disciple woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we, we are drawn? Sometimes that question came into our mind. Lord, do you really care for me? Why did you allow these things? Why me, Lord? When the trials in 2014 arrived in our family, every morning I went in the couch questioning God, Lord, why did it happen to us? I always search. I go to the internet. Why do bad things happen to good people? <laughs> and the answer, there is no good. For all have seen and come short to the glory of God. So, praise the Lord. So sometimes our question is, do you care? Of course, the Lord cares for us. He gave his only begotten son for us. That's reality. He cares. Even to your smallest pain, Right me, I got pain in my body. My thumb, I could not move this one right now. But I don't worry. Lord, you care for me. Amen. I just give everything to you. Amen. The Lord cares. Romans 8, 38 to 39. That's a good verse. Romans 8, 38 to 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angel nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Nothing could separate us. Amen. Even Brother Ben. Brother Vert is dying, but he's still at peace. I know where I'm going because God loves me. Amen. Jesus cares even to our lowest moment in life. He is there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then number three, remember God is in control. That's the problem because we want to control everything. But this time, God is in control. He got up, Mark 4, 39. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He is the omnipotent God. Amen. So he is in control. Just claim the promises of God. God is a powerful God. Just put your trust on Him. Because if we just put our trust, then let God control our lives, that's the time we could see miracles. We could see miracles in life. If we fear too much because we trust God a little, Huh? Because sometimes our fear 
We fear too much because we put our trust on God so little. So God wants us to put our trust to Him. John 16, 3, 33. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheers. I have overcome the world. He already overcome the world. God has a plan for us. Not to harm us, but to give us a good future and a good hope. That's the verse we always claim. I should put my trust on God. Praise the Lord. So what happened when that crisis 2014 So Kevin is applying for college? This is the response of God. So you know, when you go to college, you need 40,000 for one year because University, California University, you are renting uh, an apartment or uh, a place to stay, plus food, everything. So, most probably, you need 40,000. 40, so, when Kevin apply on, on uh, financial aid, because of our income, which is 12,000, he was given... $32,000 of aid. Look at that. If that crisis didn't happen, then we could present this is our income, then Kevin, for sure, he could not give that amount. So, Kevin is graduating now on college wow. this June 15 as a pharmaceutical science in UC Irvine. Praise the Lord. So, Lord, you have a plan. You have a plan. Then the following years, because, because of that uh, preceding uh, income, he was given 26000 then another 26000 then 26000 So I spent like, for the whole semester, I spent like $10,000. Then uh, maybe a loan of uh, $10,000 too. So it's not bad. God, no. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So my life right now, I'm 62 years old. So I'm retired. <clears throat> I worked here in California for 11 years, I think. So at the age of 62, I could get my social security. <laughs> I applied and I was approved. Then only Sister Vicky is working. But I use my time. I use my time. I love God in serving the Lord. Especially those things that happen in our lives. It really changes us. We become humble. We become sympathetic to others. We could feel the pain because we have been there. Then, I commit my life to God. Then, second, I commit my life to the family. I'm so grateful I have two granddaughters. So, I used to bring them to school Monday to Thursday. Then, pick up them in the afternoon. I'm enjoying serving the family. Then I serve the community, the Panera, every Tuesday morning. So this coming Tuesday, we have our water baptism. You're invited, brother. All of you are invited. So we have a water baptism. So that, that sister said that, oh, I just submit to you guys because you are the one who disciple us. No problem. Even wherever you go, what churches you, you go. We are one body. We are serving the kingdom of God. Yes. So two people are be baptized in uh, uh, Tuesday. Mm. So I have a Tuesday evening fellowship, Bible study. Then I have a Friday uh, small groups. Then on Sunday, I help Pastor Rolly to teach Sunday school. I pick up sister and a brother, bring them to the church. That's in community. 
Then, plus, I serve the intercity. We are recruiting, we are training men and women, young people, children, even kids right now, seven years old. We teach them how to share the gospel to the 1040 windows, to the Muslim area. So, we just finished uh, two weeks ago. We have uh, several uh, people graduated on that school. And the Armenian church, which is uh, the one in Capital Christian Center, because the, they are rented that one, they are the one who hosts that uh, vision school. And they are going to Armenia to, to, uh, to have the vision school in Armenia. So that's my life. I commit my life to God, to the family, to the community. So I'm so happy then. I know crisis is coming, but I'm preparing my life. Whatever crisis may happen, I'm prepared. So I just give to the Lord my closeness to God. I rely on God, and I know God is in control. Praise the Lord. So that's my message this morning. I hope and pray that you got this message. Thank you, Pastor Pell, for, uh, for allowing me to speak. So hopefully I could visit you again. Thank you and good morning to everyone. Thank you.